neither death nor life, nor the present or the future, nor any powers, nor anything in all creation will be able to separate us from the love and grace of God that is in Jesus Christ our Lord. Welcome to one of our vlogs here from St. Mark's Episcopal in Dalton, Georgia, and uh, welcome all those who are on uh, uh, YouTube and, uh, and Facebook who are joining with us and appreciate all the comments we're getting, especially from the YouTube and our, our crowd there. Uh, uh, this is one of our vlogs, but this is, uh, I'm having to re, uh, uh, film this one or re video this one. I was over on Walden Avenue where there is a, a tent set up over there on uh, Walden Avenue in Dalton where they're having uh, tent revival meetings and it's been going on for a, a couple of weeks. Uh, they're having every night at seven o'clock. I had the pleasure of attending one of those. I found it not only interesting but beneficial and I would recommend if you're interested in something like that, that is a, a place to go. It's on Walden Avenue and I'd be glad to give details of that. But we, um, but we're going to talk something about that today because tent meetings like the ones going on over there are very much of a part of our Christian heritage and tradition. Uh, you know, basically, you know, the Jesus and John the Baptist and Paul and Peter did not have churches from which they, um, uh, you know, spoke and, uh, you know, uh, was their basis for that. They were itinerant. They moved around quite a bit. And Christianity came to America pretty much in the same thing as the tent revivals uh, spread out and a lot of preachers spread the word. And really, Christianity came to North Georgia uh, along the same uh, uh, method with a lot of tent revivals. So we owe a lot to the preachers, not only uh, to the preachers who did this, but also to those uh, the local people who attended these tent meetings and began Christianity, you know, in this part of the country because of this. So, uh, you know, we can certainly uh, appreciate that. Now, this type of meetings, the tent revival meetings, like the one I attended here, are normally associated with things like speaking in tongues and prophecy and healing. And, uh, but uh, we, this is Pentecost. We've been studying uh, the Acts of the Apostles and how the early church began. And speaking in tongues and prophecy and healing was certainly a, an essential part of the early uh, part of Christianity. We cannot deny that, what, what their, their roles were. Today, probably if you said next Sunday we're going to have a prophet speak at our church or we're going to have healing, or and the next week we'll have... Um, now, somebody speaking in tongues, people will be pretty skeptical about that and uh, you know, may not be as tolerant as probably they should be of that, but we cannot really deny that um, this is something that, um, you know, that is in the Bible and something that may be something that we uh, maybe consider a little more seriously. Uh, the service I attended had a, really a lot that all of us could learn about um, congregation participation and spontaneity and certain enthusiasm, but also I would suggest that uh, those who were attending could learn a lot from our Episcopal service. You know, they could benefit and appreciate a, a large part of that. So I think the, the two types of services have a lot in common. And Sunday School at St. Mark's, last week we talked about the Episcopal service and sort of some aspects of that. And what makes us Episcopalians? And certainly our theology makes us Episcopalians. It's our theology of what we think of when we think of God. And we think of God as a, a very loving and forgiving uh, God who is the God of all people, not just our, us, but for all people. But the other way that we distinguish ourselves is the way we worship. We Episcopalians may be flexible and tolerant of and uh, comes to doctrine, but we're united in the way that we worship using the Book of Common Prayer. Our worship is participatory. It is not for the congregation, but it's by the congregation. Our worship is not done for God, although that may surprise you to hear that, but it's done about God. Our position, we share common creeds and common prayers and common confessions and, and common thanksgiving because it is a it is a, uh, an expression of the congregation and not just us as individuals. Now, when the Episcopal Church you know, practice rituals and uh, repetition, retelling and reenacting God's story through word and sacraments, very much through sacraments, until it becomes our story, or renews and reshapes us uh, to God's image so we can become God's church of the world. In the Episcopal service, the sermon is de-emphasized, and the entire service is to prepare us to participate in the Eucharist. And that's very important, that the entire service in the Episcopal Church is done to prepare us to participate in the Eucharist. Um, 
Now, regardless where we receive the message of Christ, regardless in a, a tent revival or in a brick and mortar building or the Episcopal Church or any denomination, the message of God is that we need to hear, regardless where we hear it, is that as part of creation, we collectively and individually receive God's grace. And uh, Jesus' death and resurrection was not the activator of God's grace, but is certainly the most profound embodiment and expression of God's grace and that. But, you know, um, we can, as individuals, we can deny God's grace. We can fight it. We can run from it. We can try to lose our feeling from it. But we cannot extricate ourselves or separate ourselves from God's, uh, from God's grace and from God's love. So... Uh, that is the message of the gospel, you know, that God, uh, the good news, the gospel, regardless of where we hear it and what format. And for this, we can say, thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia.